Centauri carbon catastrophically crumbling, bamboos brashly buzzing and banging, and stubborn stuck filament skewed shot sure to spur shuddering. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 184. First take. Let's get into it. <laughs> Starting off strong, or I guess weak, this week, we've got Yuri here from 3D Workbench saying that, uh, hey, Centauri Carbon users, check your belts. This is after 40 hours of use. Take a look it's in a book. at this abuse. It's the kind of thing that we talk about when you see brand new printer releases. Anyone that's putting out a review before really getting through and properly abusing the machine, you're not really certain where or what could actually go wrong. And while some people's machines seem to be okay, there's quite a few out there that we're seeing that this belt issue is not uncommon. I can't think of the last time this has actually happened to one of our printers, but this could be from having a belt too tight, having issues in the actual belt material. Maybe that's where a seam was in the belt because it was poorly manufactured. It could be from some sort of assembly process when it was assembled at the factory. Maybe it was nicked or cut or something like that. There are so many potential issues that occur here. And this is why it's good to check the belts on your printer, especially Core XY machines where often like most of the belt can be hidden behind things or at least out of the way of your obvious view. It's good to check and make sure that they're still okay and still there. Belt maintenance is something that not many of us think of. Like I really don't check belt tension after like the first couple of months. At that point, it's probably stretched as much as it's going to. What do you guys do for belt tension? Do, do you check it at all? Now I'm kind of curious to know if I'm on the right side or the wrong side of this problem. But we can see they think it's the bearing that blocked it. And my hope is that Elogu will take care of this. But as we're seeing this newer age of 3D printers and the Centauri Carbon being one of the latter releases in this new age of machine, they're not exactly designed to be user serviceable. They're designed to be, well, user replaced. The more you make a machine accessible and the easier that you make it to work on, often the more expensive it has to be made because you need abilities to take things apart versus doing it all in one piece. Bamboo obviously is the one that popularized this and we are kind of on the precipice of their newest release, the H2D. And I guess we'll see if myself and Jacob were right from our previous podcast, which were card two, so you guys can take a look, whether or not that we had a lot of things right or wrong based on the photo that leaked about this machine. But as far as this printer goes, it's relatively new. Only some of the Centauri Carbons are starting to get delivered and the regular Centauri is coming in at an absolutely blazing $200 price point are apparently starting to ship toward the middle of 2025. And I'm looking at this saying, wow, that's a lot of printer for the money. But if we see QC issues like this that are not easy for the user to repair, that does bring up a bit of a problem. Something we will definitely be keeping an eye on and hopefully getting a Centauri and a Centauri Carbon here in the shop to take a look at and evaluate from our perspective as both hobbyists and business owners see if maybe this machine could earn its way onto a farm. Definitely you're gonna wanna keep spares though because that belt stuff is a real pain in the butt on any printer, let alone a Core XY that isn't designed to be serviced. What do you guys think of this new age of 3D printers where it's designed to be disposable instead of just repaired. Speaking of throwing things away, my name's Grant, and I guess you can call me the Trash Man. This is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you are dealing with printer failures and you want to get those resolved, you can reach out to us on all the social medias, slide into those DMs, uh, preferably over on Twitter, Blue Sky, or tag us in a video over on YouTube, and we'll do our best to get you helped out. And hey, feature your fails here so we all can learn from together. Hey, if you like this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. If you do want to support the efforts that we do here, links are in that description. I'll talk about it toward the end. Don't worry. Moving on, we got a bamboo, either X1 or P1 series saying, why does my printer sound like this? Yes, it's a circle and I know it will have an oscillating sound to it. That doesn't matter here. The noises are scrapey and jittery. My printer used to barely make a sound. It's greased, lubed, and cleaned. It's just dusty from the wind. Let's take a listen. Oh, 
Okay, this one's pretty simple. This is all gonna be about the file. If you look, while it is a circular file, it has facets. And what we're seeing here is the actual machine and what we're hearing is the machine going through each of those little facets and it's vibrating, it's resonating, it's making noise. Might sound like your bedside table, but hey, that's between you and yours, not between you and me. This is a common thing when you're dealing with prints that aren't as high resolution as you're looking for, and certainly on high speed Core XY machines, this resonance can be common. If it doesn't show up in your print, like you don't see wobbling in the print, then hey, Input Shaper is doing its job and everything is A-OK, -okay, and it is kind of performing the way that it should. You can look at dealing with that by exporting your files to the higher resolution, if this is a file that you made yourself, and be careful when you're utilizing step files because that conversion can be a little bit odd when you're dealing with the conversion to an STL or a 3MF for utilization in 3D printing. So if you are gonna use step files, I would utilize a program like Fusion 360 to go ahead and convert that natively rather than relying on the slicer software itself. Traditionally, it's good enough, but take the extra step and use Fusion just to export a 3MF or an STL. It generally gets you better results. Other thing that it could be is dealing with little tiny bits of infill. Those really, really tight vibrations that we hear, that is likely due to infill, or in this case, it's doing back and forth gap fill. This is part of the printer trying to make sure that your vertical wall thickness stays the same. You can turn this off in Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer, and Prusa Slicer. Just look for it, you'll be able to find it. That should alleviate some of that vibration that you're seeing as well. But ultimately, it's gonna come down to the actual data. Unfortunately, this is a case of garbage in, garbage out, and if you're not providing it with a clean, ready-to-go file that works beautifully from the beginning, eh, you're going to potentially run into some problems with it functioning long-term. That does not mean that it's time to just throw this thing out. The printer, as far as I can tell, appears to be fine. New file should have no issues. Go ahead and try with a known file, like toss a Benchy on there and not the bamboo sliced Benchy, a Benchy that you slice yourself. That will help you verify where the issue is coming from and why. If it is still present on a file that you know does not have the issue with resolution, now it's time to take a look at your carbon rods as well as the bushings that are used on the x-axis. Unfortunately, there's really no easy way to do that. And there's no easy way to replace it. And there's no easy way to fix it. It's like a five hour job versus what it should be, like a 10 minute job. Try that out. If you are still dealing with issues, then we're gonna have to start going into mechanical, but 99 times out of 100, this one isn't mechanical. It's all, well, the printer doing exactly what you told it to, a low poly, circle of sorts. Next up, an interesting one here from the resin printing subreddit, but look at the poster. It's Formlabs, you know, the resin 3D printer manufacturer that is known for high-end resin printers, but they're running Elegoo resin printers and Shitu Box. Interesting. Saying, Razor, have you ever forgotten that models with visibility turned off in Shitu Box still get printed? Pretty amazed this printed successfully. What's your craziest printing accident that actually worked? One, that shouldn't be a thing. Oh, Shitu Box, why, why do you have that? If I'm turning off visibility, I don't want to print it. When I turn off visibility in the FDM slicers, the part effectively doesn't exist anymore as far as the slicer is concerned. I don't also want it to show up in my slice file, but this is one of those cases of check your slice files. Make sure that everything looks good. If you're not sure, you can use a program like UV Tools. We did a video on it a while back and we'll link to it in the description so you can take a look at it. And it is quite frankly, the cheat code for resin 3D printing that can help you identify when you have parts colliding like this, really the slicer should also identify this for you and hopefully show you a 3D model of what you're going to print before you actually print it. But this is also why I like Lychee Slicer over Chitu Box. So my personal opinion on that one, but I do have to remind everyone because at this point, I think I'm at least contractually obligated that resin is toxic. And even if it is the nice, fancy, expensive Form Labs resin, Unless it explicitly states that it is safe. Assume it is not. I do like to see PPE being worn here. Looks like they're using some sort of a long sleeve lab coater, minimally like a old 
hoodie that they don't care too much about. That's a pretty interesting way to handle it. We can see what the file itself actually looks like, where there is that set of eyeglasses there at an angle. Reading the comments, we learn that Formlabs does not only test other machines, but test their resin on other machines as well, because they don't want to limit the ability to utilize Formlabs resin on just Formlabs machines. I am legitimately also surprised that this worked, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the frame itself appears to be contacting the lenses in a bit of an area, basically utilizing the lenses as support. Without it, I don't think this would have worked at all. Kind of cool to see that, well, even the big boys, they still tend to make mistakes from time to time. Form Labs, I'm gonna give you a little clap on that one because it is really nice to see companies that show off when they run into problems like this. I gotta ask the same question, what is your craziest printing accident that actually worked. Last but not least, a uh, a gift that makes you wonder if you're in the right place, and I, I assure you, you are. Filament is stuck in the extruder. We've got an AnyCubic Cobra 2 Pro here, where the individual just, well, can't get it out. And, well, that's, um... That's a personal problem. We see that pick one is with the endoscope view of the extruder's feeding tubes. That would be at the top of the extruder, showing the gray PLA filament stuck behind the gears. And the second photo is the endoscope view of the extruder ending at the bottom of the extruder itself. Both picks were taken directly through the extruder as the nozzle and hot and assembly have been removed. How can they proceed? Gross. First off, one super cool way to look for problems. I've never thought about doing this, and unfortunately, my endoscope or my borescope succumbed to Hurricane Milton since it was inside of my shed, but that is a really unique way of looking for problems. The GIF, little creepy, not gonna keep showing that on screen because it, it really is just, uh, it gives you the heebie-jeebies in just a weird way. But the only way to really solve this outside of trying to push new filament through that could potentially push that little clog out is to completely disassemble the extruder and extract it that way. They did try using a thin Allen wrench. They tried the new filament that didn't work. So yeah, you're pretty much stuck with that. Now, the other thing that we're noticing is that we can see little specks of filament and what might be glue, or maybe that's just the bottom of the filament reflecting back at us. Check to make sure your extruder gears are also clean. You want to use a short bristled brush. We like to use brushes designed for cleaning firearms. We'll link to some in the description because they often have a longer side and a shorter side, but the shorter side is thinner. So you can often really get in there on the gears and be able to clean them out because any stuck filament that is in those gear teeth can cause it to slip on the filament itself, basically creating the same problem all over again. We do want to figure out how this happened in the first place. Often these kind of issues happen when you run the roll all the way through and the little tail as it goes through the extruder gets straightened and breaks off. So then it just kind of gets stuck inside of that extruder. We've seen it happen a couple of times. Often the thin Allen wrench or pushing new filament in tends to remove it, but in this case it didn't. You can also look to feeding filament up like tell the printer to retract. That might solve the issue as well by trying to force filament up and basically pushing the clog out from the bottom. This is technically a clogged extruder if you're not able to push it out any other way. But ultimately, knowing how to take apart your extruder is a fundamental principle of 3D printer maintenance. So I think it's a great time to do a little bit of learning and get that one sorted. What do you guys think? I'd like to pass that off to you. Has this ever happened to you? It's happened to me once or twice in all of our years of printing and once was on the bamboo and that's I, that's when I learned how to like quickly and effectively take apart the bamboo extruder and I got really really good at it uh, and another time was on one of the mark threes and that is a much more complicated extruder to take apart but it is an easier extruder to service overall because you can just completely lift up the door, go in there with a pair of tweezers and pull out that piece of filament because you don't have to completely disassemble it to get that bit out. So at least it's got that going for it, which is nice. The other thing that is nice, the name's listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts here on this channel, and hey, at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where we do hangouts and live streams and things like that with just patrons only, hey, you can do so by joining by those links in that description down below. Hey, if you've made it this far, a like and subscribe goes a long way to helping us out. We are on the cusp of 50,000 subscribers, and we still have no idea 
what it is we're going to be doing for that big 50k special so if you do want to get your voice heard on that toss it in those comments greatly appreciate you and if you've enjoyed this video hey you might enjoy the rest of the print fix friday series listed right below me and hey next to that will be a video that youtube chooses that's all we have for you all today stay safe out there don't forget to call your levels remember resin is toxic ha got the editor right at the end and as always keep making awesome have a good one